Inshallah, we're beginning with the eighth ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah today. The last ayah we had studied was Allah placing a seal, a seal upon those who are bent upon disbelief. Allah placed a seal upon their hearts first, and then their hearing, and a cover was placed upon their seeing, and they especially had a great punishment. Now we're moving to the third category of people. Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned in the surah the first category of people were people that have taqwa. And their taqwa was described further, the people of taqwa were described further with having certain qualities about iman, and then about spending, and then them having the conviction of the afterlife. Then the extreme opposite. There's the people who have fear of Allah and want to, want to serve Allah Azza wa Jalla, the exact opposite, those who are bent upon disbelief. Now there's a third category. So this is the third category of people that are being talked about. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala wa min nas And out of the people there are those, man yaqulu amanna billah. Is the, is the one who says, we've come to believe in Allah. Now there's some very interesting language here. You could say, wa min nas in ladina yaquluna amanna billah. Because nas is ism jamr, you can say in ladina. But man is used particularly here to say something very special. I'll highlight that a, a little bit inshallah. From the people, there is the one who says, now when I say the one who says, what is that? That's singular, isn't it? But then it says, Amanna bindahi. We believe in Allah. We believe in Allah. Now, when somebody says, you would expect him to say, I believe in Allah. Because the singular is used right there, where the alternative in Arabic is available, though man can be used for the plural as well. Here specifically, Allah Azza wa Jalla highlights that he speaks, this single person is speaking, but he's speaking on behalf of a group, amanna billahi, we believe in Allah. Why? Because this is, Allah is describing the hypocrite, the munafiq. And the munafiq, one of his biggest attempts, the attempt of the hypocrite is to seem like he is one with the believers. He is from among them. So he puts himself with the group and says, we all have iman in Allah. We're all the same. Amanna billahi, wa bil yawmin akhi. And in the last day, wa ma'ahum bi mu'mineen. And then Allah calls them out and says, they are not believers at all. And even in Arabic, again, when you say that someone is not something, there are tons of ways of saying it. But ma, coupled with ba at the end, this is one of the strongest ways to say no. In other words, Allah is saying they are not believers at all. They have no iman at all. You know, there are places in the Quran we'll find when Allah talks about the hypocrites, He says, They don't remember Allah except a little bit. Or they have a little bit of iman. But here in this surah, Allah is so harsh towards them. He says they have no iman at all, even though they say that with their tongues. Then he says, "Yuhabiyun Allah." They try to deceive Allah. Who is trying to deceive Allah? It is the hypocrites. Yuhabiyun Allah. They're trying to deceive Allah. Walladina amanu, and they're trying to deceive those who believe. Wala yaqda'una illa anfusahum. But they're not actually deceiving anyone at all except their own selves with their claims to be true believers and to mingle in with the crowd of the believers, Allah calls this their attempt at deception. What they really are is no different from the other category that was described, those who disbelieve, those who proclaim their disbelief. They're no different as far as Allah is concerned. And when, when they try to mingle in with the ranks of the believers, Allah Azza calls them out as being, attempting to be spies basically. They're trying to fool Allah, they're trying to fool those who believe, but they're actually not fooling anyone except their own selves. وَمَا يَشْرُونَ And they don't even realize. They have no realization. Here it's very important that we make a very critical distinction that all Muslims should be aware of. It's a very basic thing, but sometimes it gets uh, lost in our uh, conversations. There are two basic kinds of hypocrites. There are two basic kinds of hypocrites. Hypocrites that are non-Muslims, but are pretending to be Muslims. You could call that a spy, a double agent, whatever you want to call it, right? These are people that may be sitting in the crowd right now, they have ulterior motives. I'll give you a, an example of a, a real-time example, just so you know how real this situation is. I was in uh, Chicago not too long ago, and I came from the area, because we had an advanced area class during day times, so the must is basically empty before lower time, and I'm leaving the must and this guy pulls up long beard, turban, green clothes on, slippers, the whole gear, you know? And he pulls up to me at the random guy, blonde, you know, blue eyes, long blonde hair, right? Interesting archetype. He pulls up and he goes, aren't you that from YouTube? And I was like, uh, I'm not sure who you're referring to. Yeah, yeah, you give those talks, right? I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's me. 
And we just started talking. And some brothers were going to take us out to lunch, and he wanted to jump in. And I knew something's up with this guy. You know, and my, my Arabic tutor also who was with me, he said, have a shaf khatir. <laughs> this guy's dangerous, just watch out. There's something off about this guy, you know. But the other younger brothers, they're a little more naive, so they said, no, 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 let him tag along. Yeah, you can join us for lunch, great. So he comes for lunch. Not two minutes go by, and what happens? He says, yeah, we should be proud to be calling ourselves terrorists. Allah says we terrorize disbelievers. We should take pride in that. And I know already this guy, something's up. He wants these naive teenage boys and these college students to say, yeah. And he's probably wearing a reporter on some, something's up, you know. So we try to dismantle his arguments and we say, you know, brother, I don't think you're in the right state of mind. And if you speak like this, we'll have to report you to the authorities. Two minutes later, he's like, I gotta go. Up. I gotta go, up, you know. And then it so happens, we actually found out later on, yes, and he, he made mention he was sent by this masjid, he sent him into this shit and that shit. We call those shit. We call the masjid. Is this, you know this person? No idea who this guy is. I don't know what you're talking about. And guess what we find out? He was sent by a church group. And they have people like this sent to massaging all over America nowadays. They want to catch people on secret video cameras and tape and whatnot. And he knew who I was too. They know their stuff. They do their homework, you know. And it's not like I'm that famous, but they know. But they, they do these things and this is one kind of what happened. They know they're not Muslim. They're trying to, you know, fit in our ranks and, and get us to do ridiculous things. And you know, Muslims should be not, not naive of these things. We should be cautious and careful and be kind of savvy about what's going on around us also, right? So that's one kind of munafiq. But then there's a second kind of munafiq that's even more dangerous and more scary. You know which kind of munafiq that is? The hypocrite who doesn't even know that he or she is a hypocrite. They don't even know. They don't even realize it. They actually think they're good Muslims. They think so. And this could be any one of us. This second category is more scary because it could apply to any one of us. And this, uh, this idea was so scary even to the Sahaba. Among the Sahaba are people like Umar bin Khattab who's guaranteed paradise. But when the names of the hypocrites, the, the, it is known that there are certain people that Allah has told the Messenger, these are Allah people, he's worried, is my name in that list or not? You know, he's worried because he understands that there are two different kinds of Munafiq. There's the spy who knows he's not Muslim, and there's the one who doesn't even realize. At the end of this ayah, Allah gives us a clue into the second kind of Munafiq. They don't even realize it themselves. They have no realization. They have no realization. But then how will someone know that, how will you and I know first of all, if we are suffering from this disease? And now we will learn in the surah, Allah Azza wa says very next words, people will be him up. In their hearts there is a disease. Hypocrisy is a disease. Now if you are sick and I am sick, how are we supposed to know if we are sick unless we know the symptoms? Isn't that true? So the only way to know if you and I have the sickness is to look for the symptoms. Now this surah will give us some symptoms, other surahs will give us even more symptoms. So we should constantly be on the lookout for these things inside of us. When there's a serious disease out in society, like the bird flu or whatever, like swine flu, you take two farm animals, put a flu next to it, and you come up with a new one, right? So when you do that, and they, they announce on the news that you know if you're sneezing too much, or if you notice a little, you know, redness in your skin or something, go see a physician, you might have a fatal disease or whatever. People start showing up to the doctor even if they're not sick. I think it's a flu. I, I think I have swine flu. I was scratching myself and it got red, and I better go to the, you know, the ER or something. Because they're terrified, this might be that disease. Well, if the Muslim understands that hypocrisy, nifaq, is a serious disease, then they should be looking for those symptoms. And even if they find the slightest sign of that symptom, immediately try to address it. You understand what I'm saying? So what Allah says, people do the In their hearts there is a disease. This is a heart disease. Seriously, a heart disease. A fatal disease. فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Then Allah increased them in their disease. May Allah not make us from these unfortunate people. وَلَهُ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And they especially have painful punishment. For disbelievers, Allah said, they have great punishment. But then Allah took a step further for hypocrites. He said they have painful punishment. Alam is the meaning of pain. And alim means constantly painful. You know something about pain if you speak to people who are suffering from a disease? that causes them pain, they develop tolerance for that pain. So their tolerance goes up. In other words, if you're being suffering the same way every day, the first day it's a lot more painful, the next day it's painful, but not as painful as the day before. By Allah using the word anim, it means the pain is the same all the time. 
It doesn't go down. They don't develop any tolerance to this pain. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ In other words, this punishment is worse than even the punishment mentioned for the kuffar. Even worse than that, subhanAllah. This is the punishment of the munafiq. And when we study Qur'an, we'll see when Allah talks about the punishments of munafiq, only He's the harshest. Even more harsh than He is towards kuffar. Even though He's harsh towards them. Saying they have a great punishment is a terrible thing in and of itself. But He takes the next step with munafiq. May Allah not make this from them. And understand that this surah, one of the things that's special about Surah Al-Baqarah, it deals with matters of the heart in great detail. It deals with matters of Iman. And by contrast, you will find in Surah al imran in the next surah, there will be a lot of mention of Islam. So there's Iman here and then Islam. First you fix what's on the inside, which is what? Iman. And then what comes out on the outside is? Islam, right? So you find in the Dina in the life Islam, or Madhyatta Dilayan Islam, Dina Kala Yukala Mimu. You find all this mention of Islam in Ali Rabbah. But in this story, you'll find over and over again mention of matters of the heart. So let's keep on reading. Fi Guru Bihimbao. In their hearts, there is, especially in their hearts, there is a disease. Fazada Humullah Humarada. Then Allah increased them in their disease. Wala Humadabun Alimun. And for them, especially, there is painful punishment, greatly painful punishment. Unlike the Mufar, he didn't end here. He said, بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ Because of the lies they continue to make. Because of the lies they continue to make. The first symptom of the hypocrite has been given. Which is what? They are liars. And they lie continuously. بِمَا يَكْذِبُونَ is different. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ is different. They continuously used to lie. This is istimara here. Right? So this is something that's a very serious sign of hypocrisy. No lie is too small. No lie is a white lie. We have to look for them. We have to be conscious of them in our in our daily affairs. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ When it is said to them, don't cause corruption in the earth. Don't cause corruption in society. Don't be the cause of, of, of fasad. لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا What do they say in response? إِنَّمَا لَكْنَ الْمُسْلِمُ Oh no, we're the peacemakers. We're the ones trying to reconcile. Now you have to understand the background of this ayah. You see Allah's Messenger وسلم, is in this intense struggle against Kufr. There's this, the truth and falsehood have collided against each other, and now it is no black from white. But these hypocrites, they have friends that are not Muslims. And they have friends that are Muslims in Medina. They have old allegiances and they have new allegiances with the Muslims. And if they become completely aligned with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, then they have to cut off some old relationships. But they want to keep it so that they keep both sides happy. Just in case if the Muslims win, we have good connections with the Muslims. But if in case things don't work out with this messenger, and they're all killed and they die, well, we don't want to die out either. We should have at least some back door open with the Qur'an also. So they go and they kind of mingle with both sides. And they don't take a clear side. They're wishy-washy about it. And so, when, and this is a kind of corruption. This Allah is also kind of, kind of corruption. But when you say to them, why are you causing this facade? They say, no, we're just trying to make peace. We're just trying to reconcile between the two sides, not knowing that those who are on the other side are not interested in peace. And that's the other misconception. These people think that they're only trying to cause peace. Understand, the people on the, against the Messenger of Allah وسلم, in Medina and in Mecca, these people are far worse and have far more animosity in their hearts than the Muslims ever had towards them. The Muslims only responded to injustices that were done to them. And even then, even if we have prisoners of war, they were treated better than even the soldiers themselves. This was the attitude of the Muslims. But inside the hearts of the enemies of Islam, there was intense hatred. Intense hatred. And they, would, I mean, they were engaged in torture and psychological abuse and all kinds of filth against the Muslims from the very beginning. But these people, because they don't want to lose allegiances on either side, they think they're peacemakers, which in reality they're not, not even close to. أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ No, أَلَا means you should all know, beware. You know, uh, get it through your heads. These are the ones, and there's no doubt about it, these are the ones that are the cause of mischief. These are the cause of corruption. Those people, they are the cause of corruption. The hypocrites. وَلَا إِنَّا يَشْرُونَ However, they have no realization. They don't feel it. They don't realize it at all. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا أَبَدَ النَّاسِ When it is said to them, why don't you have Iman? Develop Iman in your heart just like other people have Iman. In other words, they're told, Look, why don't you have Iman like Abu Bakr? Why don't you have Iman like Allah? Why don't you have Iman like, you know, Muslim ibn al Why don't you have Iman like these people? What's wrong with you guys? Why can't you be more like them? 
Because these people, these, when we say, why don't you believe like the real people have believed, these people have believed, we're referring to people who have proven their iman, who sacrificed money, who sacrificed their livelihoods, who sacrificed their homes and traveled with the Messenger, abandoned everything that they had and left it behind, spent whatever they could in the cause of Islam. These people have proven that they actually have iman, they have no other motive but to please Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, to show allegiance to the Messenger. When they're told, why can't you be like that? They look at those believers, those, those muhajirun, the people who have migrated from Makkah, they look at them and say, you want us to believe like that? And we look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want us to believe like these fools, these idiots believe? Who are they calling fools? And this guy was doing good business in Makkah, he left everything and came here. You want me to be like him? You want me to be like that loser, that fool? Look at him. He doesn't even have the sense to save his house. Okay, you can believe, but you don't have to believe that much. You, you should sacrifice, but don't go crazy in your sacrifices. These people are too extreme. I don't want to be like them. Kama Adam Sufaha. So they call the true believers who have made all these sacrifices and their allegiance to the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa they call them fools. And they don't have to respond. That's the beauty of it. The Sahaba who are being insulted in this ayah, they don't have to say, who are you calling fools? The messenger doesn't have to say, don't call them fools, these are my beloved companions. He doesn't have to do that. You know who defends them? Allah Himself, He says, Ala sufaha. No, these people, no doubt, they are in fact the ones that are fools. They're the ones who are fools. Who's saying that? Allah is saying that. Allah comes to the defense of His Sahaba. And He says, However, they don't know. They don't even know what kind of fools they are. So in the one place Allah says before, twice He said they don't even realize it. Now He's saying they have no knowledge either. And so another element of hypocrisy is a lack of knowledge derived from this time. They don't realize it, and they don't have much knowledge either. They don't really know what a fool it is. And later on in the surah, Allah will teach us, you want to be intelligent and lead the way of fools? Allah Azza wa talking about the sacrifices of Ibrahim He says in the same surah, you know, مِنْ لَكِ إِبْرَاهِيمْ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِيهَا نَفْسَ Who will leave the legacy of Ibrahim السلام, except the one who fools himself? Now when Allah refers to the legacy of Ibrahim, what do you think of? Sacrifices. So those sacrifices are done by the intelligent, and whoever abandons sacrifices is the fool. So when the Sahaba are making sacrifices, they are on the legacy of Ibrahim السلام, And whoever abandons that is the fool. Anyhow, he says, When they come to those who believe, they say, every time they do come, they say, We have Iman. And they make sure they say it. Now, believers don't have to say to each other, We have Iman. It's no. If somebody comes to you, I really believe he's the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, I really have strong Iman in the Akhir. When somebody says that, you say, Man, that guy is weird. Why does he want to come and tell me what he believes? Belief is in the heart. We all know we're Muslims. You don't have to come and claim your case to me. You know why when someone feels the need to do that? I'll give you a childish example. Your kid comes to you and says, I didn't, I didn't write anything on the wall, you know. What does that mean? You got a closet skeleton in the closet. You got something to hide. You're covering, you're overcompensating. The hypocrites are paranoid. They're paranoid that people see through them. Right? They see what the filth is on the inside, because they got filth inside. And when they come to the believers, when they come to the community of the Muslims, they feel like everybody can see them for who they really are. So they feel like they need to cover up more. And the way to cover up more is, I really have a lot of Iman. Halu Amanna. We have Iman, we're with you. You know, they go out of their way. The leader of the hypocrites, Abdullah ibn Qurayy, the leader of the hypocrites, before the messenger would get up to speak, you know what he used to do? He used to stand up before him. People, this is the Messenger of Allah, listen carefully. You should, you should listen to his advice, he has good things to teach you, and you just make a public service announcement and sit down. Why? Because he's hoping if I do that, by the way, even if he didn't make that announcement, are the Sahaba not listen anyway? They are, okay? He just needs a little bit of mic time, so people know that this guy is legitimate. You know when he walked away from Uhud? He left Uhud, right? The next week after that, the khutbah was being given, he got up again, people, this is the Messenger of Allah, listen to him carefully. Some Sahaba grabbed him and sat him down. <laughs> and he was furious, he was, he was enraged, he didn't get to do his show, so he walked out of the Jum'ah. He walked out of the khutbah, and at the entrance of the khutbah, some Sahaba met him, where are you going? He turned back, make a step up. I don't need any step up, he walks out. When he gets called out, they explode. This is 
what Allah's Messenger describes of Allah as another sign of the hypocrite. When he's argued, debated, criticized, he explodes in anger. He couldn't take it, his temper exploded. He walks away from the Jum'ah. I don't care if I, now that I'm exposed, might as well go all out. You know, that was, that was the idea behind that. So anyway, here Allah just says, when they come to the believers, they make tall claims. And when they go back to their devils, now it's not like they're meeting jinns in the background. Who are they meeting? They're meeting the enemies of Islam that are plotting against Allah's Messenger, but they're making friends with them anyway, and sharing Muslim secrets with them. This will become more elaborated in Surah Ali Imran when Allah says, لا تتخذوا بطانة من دونكم لا يأمون لكم خبالا ودوا ما علمتم Don't take secret keepers, close intimate friends other than Muslims. Don't make those friends like that other than Muslims. Really close friends that you share secrets with. They will not leave any stone unturned in trying to cause you harm. What do ma'anittum? They want to, they want what would harm you. قَدْ بَدَتِ الْبَغْبَاءُ مِنَ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ The animosity has already come out of their mouths. وَمَا تُخْفِي صُدُورُهُمْ أَكْبَرُ And what they're hiding in their hearts is even bigger. What they say out of their mouths is nasty. But you don't even know what they haven't said yet. Allah knows that too, and that's even worse. So don't think that they're there to make peace. They're just using you as a pawn, and these people are getting used. But when they go to them, they say, إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ مُسْتَعْزِئُونَ We're with you guys, for sure. We were just kidding. When we went to the Muslims and said we believe like they believe, we were just kidding. We're, we're really with you, we're chummy with you guys. So they're trying to keep both sides happy. You see that? This is, by the way, incredible. The Arabic language is so beautiful in this. The word munafir comes from the word nafaqa, which is a lizard's hole. And the lizard, in the desert lizard, it makes a hole that has two entrances. So if the, 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 the hounds or the fox is coming after it from one hole, it can come out the other hole. And if it comes out this hole, it can come out the other hole. From that we get, get the word munafir. If the Muslims are in trouble, he can always have the open door with the kuffar. And if the kuffar are losing, he always he can say, ah, I'm a believer right here, Abanda. Right, so he's got both exits open. So this, this is the, the nature of the munafir. Allah says, and so he says, we were just kidding. We're not really with those Muslims. You're being crazy like that. No. Allah who yes, that is you him. It is Allah who is making fun of them. And there's a lot of shawat in this, uh, this part of the ayah. One of them, of course, is Allah will humiliate them on judgment. But even now, this pathetic attitude is Allah's way of humiliating them. They have no respect. They have no the Muslim community doesn't respect them. The kuffar don't respect them, even they see them as weasels. They don't respect them either. Nobody, they have no respect, and they are the object of ridicule everywhere they turn. And this is Allah's way of humiliating these people. Allah who just has humiliated. And he lets he extends them. Very powerful words. He extends them in their rebellion and allows them to remain blind. Now there's amiya in Arabic. Amiya, which means to be blind in the eyes. Then there's amiha, to be blind in the heart. Allah says, وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي تُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ He extends them in their rebellion, blind of the heart. Now what does that mean? It means they want, they disobey Allah, they violate Allah's commandments, Allah gives them more opportunities to violate even more commandments, and more opportunities to disobey Him even more. In other words, in, in, other than, rather than restricting the opportunities for evil deeds, Allah opens the door to evil deeds wide open for them, go ahead, knock yourself out. Go ahead, dig your hole even deeper, if you will. When my teacher, Dr. Abdul Sami, was explaining this ayah to me, he said something really interesting. He gave a really interesting parable, I'll give it to you. He says, you have a wild dog. You're trying to calm this dog down, it doesn't calm down. You try to put it on a leash, it's constantly blowing at the leash. So the owner decides that he's going to punish this dog. So you know what he does? He gives him a 300 foot leash. When the dog tries to pull, now it's, it's free to run, so it runs as fast as it can. And the dog is thinking, this is an act. Look, I'm free. Nothing happened to me, I'm good. But actually, this is a punishment. Why is this a punishment? Because when he reaches top speed, what's going to happen? <laughs> He's going to get yanked. The pull is going to be even harder. The, the more they dig their... Allah says, you want to dig your hole? You know what? Let me have you dig it a little deeper for yourself. And literally dig it as deep as you possibly can because Allah will tell us later on in the Quran, Inna al-munafiqeena fi al-dabki al-asfali min al Hypocrites are the lowest pit of the hellfire. How do you think they got that low? They dug it themselves. These are the people who purchased misguidance 
in exchange for guidance. They had something so beautiful that they got. The vast majority of humanity does not get the gift that these people had. The company of Allah's Messenger, what more would you ask for? They got to hear the kalam of Allah from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How much more of a gift can you get? And they exchanged that for their misguidance. They, they traded that away. Then their trade did not give them any benefit at all. This ayah often gets translated in a shallow way. Most translations say, and they weren't guided, or they had never been guided. But actually, muhtad is someone who makes an effort to be guided. And Allah is saying they never made an effort to, to, to commit to guidance. They were never such. This is why they ended up in this case. Even when they entered Islam, it was a casual endeavor. And when you come into something casually, you can walk out of it casually too. When you make a serious commitment to enter into something, it's very hard for you to come out of it. But they, they came into this Islam on a bed of roses, very easy. Islam's on the rise, Medina is becoming more and more powerful, the followers of the Messenger are gaining more and more control. This seems like an easy thing to join. So they joined it. But they joined it with a lot of ease. There was no difficulty for them to join it. They, 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 no commitment was tested. So Allah says, وَمَا كَانُوا مُبْتَدِينَ They were not committed to guidance at all. مَثَلُهُمْ And we'll end with these two parables, inshaAllah. Very, really beautiful parables of two degrees of nifa, two degrees of hypocrisy Allah compares with these parables. مَثَلُهُمْ <laughs> Their example. كَمَثَلِ النَّذِسْتَ الْقَدَلَاءَ Is the example of someone who lit a fire. Someone who lights a fire. Now, I want you to understand the examples in the Qur'an, you cannot appreciate them until you imagine the scene Allah wants you to do. He depicts scenes. Very picturesque scene. So it's pitch black and somebody lit a fire. Then he says, When everything around him was, was brilliant with light, it was lit up. He lit this fire, the fire kindled, and the black around him started disappearing, now there's light all around him. How many people lit a fire? One. Singular, one person. Now listen. ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ Allah took their light away. Their light away. In other words, now Allah is talking about another group of people. It's not the same person. This is actually the one who lights the fire. This is the picture given of a messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa Or even some ulama commented, this is talking about Musa alayhi wa sallam. The light is coming later on. So he lights a fire. He gives the, the light of guidance to his community who are in darkness. So now they can see. Before this, they were begging for guidance. They were looking for a way. They had no. They were in darkness. And now finally, they can see. But even when they saw the right way to go, they, they didn't benefit from this light. So what did Allah do? That have Allah be him. Allah removed their light. Allah. So they're no longer able to see their light. And some ulama commented here in this ayah, nur actually means their asaf. That they, their, their ability to see their own light, meaning the ayin is also in, in Arabic poetry, nur, one of the means of nur is your eyes. Because your eyes are the means by which you can appreciate light. So dhahab Allahu bi nurihim means their ability to appreciate light. Their eyes were gone. In other words, now that the light's turned on, you're blind. What benefit is the light turning on now? You yourself are incapable of benefiting from the light. These are people who were, had access to guidance, who were exposed to the light, didn't want to benefit from it. When you don't want to benefit from this light, the punishment of Allah wasn't just that the light would be taken away. No, that would be unfair to what others might come. Rather, your light is taken away. And He left him in shades of darkness. Not ظلمات ظلمات, shades of darkness. So some people are in a degree of hypocrisy, some even more, some even more, some even more. There are different degrees of hypocrisy. They're not able to see. Then he says, Sumbun, Bukmun, Rumyun. Now the, the translation is deaf, mute, and blind. I'm not going to say dumb, that's politically incorrect. Okay? So deaf, mute, and blind. Deaf, of course, not able to hear. Mute, not able to speak. Rumi, not able to see. These are plurals, all three of them. But there's no and in between them. In other words, it doesn't say they're deaf, and mute, and blind. There's no atif in between. You know what that means? They're all three at the same time. Now can you imagine, it's, there's, a, there's a fire, there's, there's a light there, but these people are three things. They're deaf, they're mute, and they're blind in the middle of the desert, in the pitch black. What's the harm of being deaf? If somebody says, okay, you can't see the light, come over here. Can they hear that? No, they're not able to benefit from, they're, they're, they're listening. They're deaf. 
then, okay, I can't see and I can't hear, maybe I can call out for help. But they can't call out for help because they are mute. They're mute. Okay, but I can't hear anybody giving me guidance. I can't even ask for it because I'm mute. Maybe at least I can see them, but now we're all mute. They're blind. In other words, all access to guidance is stopped. All access to guidance is stopped. I mean, it, Imagine that scene. If you're in the pitch black, you can't see anything, you can't hear anything, at least you would be able to call out for help, they can't even do that. All three roads to ac access to guidance have been taken away. Then they're not going to be able to return. And here, uh, in this remarkable ayah, Allah said, Daya Ji'un, again, subtle precision in the Quran. These people had life, right? So they were in the place they're supposed to be. Then their light went away. So they went off. When Allah says they can't come back, come back to what? Come back to what they had to begin with. They were where they were supposed to be. So their starting point was good. Then they went back. That's the nature of the hypocrite. They, these hypocrites, especially the ones who don't realize they're hypocrites, they may have come for good reasons, but they didn't have the moral will and the strength of character to hold on to this faith the way they should. So they're not able to come back. Now, the second example. This was the first example. The second example, another kind of hypocrisy, nifaq. Or picture a dark cloud in the sky. In it, there's a lot of darkness. And there is thunder and lightning inside that, that, that cloud. Now, I, we don't see that much you know, heavy dark clouds in like Texas area, if you go places like Georgia, or you go to like uh, more towards the east coast, like Virginia area, the clouds come real low. And you know, it, it can become like pitch black almost even during the daytime, it gets pretty scary. These dark, dark, dark clouds, now this intense, this rain is going on, nighttime, heavy, heavy clouds, and this thunder and lightning is taking place, now these people are stranded. There's a bunch of people stranded in this scene. Now imagine this scene. He says, They place their fingers and their ears. Because of the loud explosions, the sky thunders. You know, even nowadays when sometimes there's thunder, our children wake up and start crying. Even you like jump out of bed like, what was that? You know, now they're traveling and they hear a loud sound. You know, and they immediately get rattled. So they don't want to hear those sounds, so what do they do? They stick their fingers in their ears. Have a lot out of fear of death. Be cautious of death, be wary of death. What does this parable mean? That's what we're going to conclude with, inshaAllah. But when we say, Allah has completely encircled disbelievers. The passage was about munafiqun. The discussion was about people who say they believe, but they don't have iman. But Allah ends, وَاللَّهُ مُحِيطٌ بِالْمُنَافِقِينَ وَلَمْ يَقُمْ مُنَافِقِينَ قَالْ الْكَافِرِينَ وَاللَّهُ مُحِيطٌ بِالْكَافِرِينَ Allah has encircled those who have kufr. Because Allah knows what's inside. Allah knows what's inside. What's inside is kufr as far as Allah is concerned. But I wanted to share with you the benefits of the scene that Allah has drawn. And what some ulama have to say about the scene that has been given. What they essentially have to say, so you can understand the next the completion of this parable, is that they are in this difficult journey. The idea is they're in a very difficult journey, and in this journey there are scary things happening. What are the scary things? This, the, 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 the climate is getting darker, right? And there's thunder and lightning, which is scary. This is describing the journey one takes into Islam. When someone takes a journey into Islam, it's not an easy journey. It's going to be filled with difficulties and challenges. Now, these people are so scared of the challenges, what do they do? They pretend those challenges aren't there. They pretend that they don't have any responsibility. Now, let's see what else they do. Allah Azza wa says, يَكَادُ الْبَرْقُ يَخْطَفُ أَمْصَارَهُ The lightning almost takes their eyesight away. So the imagery of your eyesight being removed is being repeated. The previous parable also had it, this one also had it. When the lightning comes, their eyes are almost blinded. You know, they can stick their fingers in their ears, but that still doesn't mean they can ignore other aspects of their climate. They will still see something. This is mentioning that, you know, uh, even if they don't listen to the message of Islam, even if they refuse to listen to the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there will be situations that occur in the life of the Messenger and in the career of the believers that they will have to face. They will have to face them. And those situations are so intense for them, they almost lose 
Their faith altogether, their ability to see the truth altogether. يَخْتَفُ أَبْصَارَهُمْ كُلَّمَا أَضَاءَهُمْ أَشَوْ فِيهِ Then every time the, the light comes out for them, meaning a little bit of lightning strikes, they can see. So they start walking. وَإِذَا أَضَّلَ عَلَيْهِمْ قَامُ And whenever it gets dark again, they stand. Ulama comment about this part of the ayah, this refers to some commandments that they find easy. But a little bit of a road is seen, when there's a little bit of an opportunity to move forward, go along with the believers, they'll go forward. But when times get tough again, they're standing, it's too dark, I can't move forward. It's too scary for me. I'll just stick my fingers in my hand. And this, by the way, understand the, the per one of the purposes of this scene. If you're in the middle of a dark night and it's thunder and you have to travel and get somewhere, is it a logical attitude to stick your fingers in your ear just so you, you'll be safe? It's an idiotic thing to do, right? By means of this parable, Allah is calling out the stupidity of, the, of hypocrisy. He's calling it a stupid attitude. It is not something based in reason or in intellect. Even though the, the hypocrites are very confident in their knowledge and in their understanding, they're the ones that are fools. And Allah said that they are fools a few hours ago, didn't He? Now he's explaining to us some of the aspects of their foolish behavior. Right? So here he says then, concluding, If Allah wanted, He would remove their hearing and their seeing also. In other words, the previous group, what did Allah take away from them? You remember? Their seeing was gone, their hearing was gone, right? Their speaking was gone. Allah says, these people, at least they're following a little bit. When the lightning strikes, at least they move a little bit, so they're not completely immersed in nifaq yet, hypocrisy yet. They still have some hope. But if Allah wants, and if they continue this way, then Allah will remove their hearing, their hearing and they'll become like the previous group also. But they still, these people still have hope. In other words, when the believer who has weak iman, like, he, like myself and you, if we have weak iman inside us and we hear this ayah, we say, hey, we better change our behavior before Allah decides. The worst case scenario, right? إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلْ بِشَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ No doubt Allah is completely capable over all things. Now the concluding ayah. Three groups have been talked about. The believers were talked about briefly. The kuffar were talked about briefly. Then the munafiqun were talked about at length. At length. Why? Because the believer is very clear category. The disbeliever very clear category. Where's a sticker on his head, kafir. You know? I've had a... When we were moving to Texas, one of the guys that were on the delivery truck for our car was wearing a t-shirt, said kafir on it. An infidel. <laughs> Even though we don't use that translation. But they do. Proud to be kafir, right? So he's, he's not hiding it. He's not hiding it. It's clear cut case. Oh, like, at least I know who you are now. Oh, you know, no mystery there. But the munafit is a difficult category to figure out. You don't know. I don't know where I stand. You don't know where you stand. And we don't know where the person next to us stands. We don't know. And there's no reason for us to judge either. So Allah spends extra time on the case that is different. Extra time on that case. And then you will notice after this introductory passage, we'll discuss a lot about Bani Isma'i. Why? Because they had the problem, not of Iman and Kufa, their real problem was Nifaq, hypocrisy. Learn from their mistakes so you don't make the same mistake. That's why Allah will give us detailed accounts. Detailed accounts of the, of the life of Bani Isma'i. But concluding with all these deep groups, all three groups all together make humanity all together. Humanity is either believers, or disbelievers, or hypocrites. So now at the end of this passage, it's time to address all of them all together. And a final invitation. Ya ayyuhal nas. People, all people, listen up. U'budu rabbakum. Enslave yourselves. And worship your, the master of all of them. Enslave yourselves to your master. U'budu rabbakum. This is, if somebody asks you what's the summary of the Qur'an, this is the summary of the Qur'an. Iyaka na'amu. Accept yourself as slave, accept Allah as master, you've got the summary of the Qur'an. Or'budu rabbakum. And the dhi khalafat. Wal nadhi na min qabdiku. The one who created you, and the one who created those who came much before you. Enslave yourself to him. La'allakum taqtaqu. So that you all, now here taqwa means something else. Taqwa doesn't just mean you can be fearful. Here it means so you can protect yourself. The word taqwa in the Qur'an is also used in the meaning of protecting yourselves. Like on the Day of Judgment, Allah says, وَكَيْفَ تَبْتَقُونَ إِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ يَوْمَ يَجْعَلُوا بِذَانَ شِيْبَا How will you protect yourself on a day when you know, the young person is going to become gray hair? The, the, the baby will grow gray, gray hair out of grief. 
How are you going to protect yourself on that day? Taqul is used in that time. Here Allah says, enslave yourselves to your master so you can protect yourself. This, the Qur'an begins, the Qur'an begins, Allah Azza wa says, guidance for who? For people who have taqwa. People who actually protect themselves, who want to protect themselves, who take precaution. Allah says you should become a slave to Allah so you can gain this quality of taqwa. You can be of those who protect yourselves. May Allah be of those who protect themselves, who have the quality of taqwa. May Allah overlook our mistakes and remove the disease of hypocrisy from our hearts and keep our iman strong and help each other build love for each other and love for this deen and love for this book and love for his messenger. ونحن نحن 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 نحن